What's up, YouTube? Hope you're hope you're doing reasonably well. You know, keeping the dream alive and whatnot. I just I just wanted to offer up my two cents on this Eminem freestyle, this anti-Trump Eminem freestyle that has just broken the internet and at least to me, has inspired some really interesting discussion and debate. In case you're watching this video and you're somehow unaware, on Tuesday night at the BET Awards, Eminem contributed a four and a half minute acapella cypher verse that was devoted entirely to blasting Donald Trump in every way imaginable. He called Trump a racist, he voiced his personal support for Colin Kaepernick with the whole standing for the national anthem controversy, he talked about Trump's wall, he talked about Trump's infamous comments about John McCain being a prisoner of war. He went after all of it with, of course, very intricate bars full of the meticulous internal rhyming and shit that we come to expect from Eminem. Perhaps most notably at the end, Eminem basically said fuck you to his own fans who support Trump and says he's drawing a line in the sand. You know, it's one of the most highly publicized moments in hip hop music this year for good reason. It's drawing a lot of attention, both positive and negative, and I just feel like I have a few things to add to the subject. First off, coming at this not from a political angle, but just in the context of Eminem's career, this is a very significant verse for him. Because people tend to forget that some of the most interesting music Eminem ever made was in that brief political phase that he had. It started after the Eminem show and it went into the encore record. Like on Rap Game by D12, which appeared on the 8 Mile soundtrack, which is kind of in that period, he, he tells former Secretary of State C. Dolores Tucker to suck a dick, calls her a slut. It's probably because she was very critical of hip hop lyrics. There's that infamous line in the song, We As Americans, which actually, even on the explicit version, that line had to be edited out because it was, especially in that like post 9-11 time, he basically said, I don't rap for dead presidents, I'd rather see the president dead. <laughs> pretty crazy line. Uh, I still love that song, so I think that song's pretty underrated. And of course, on the encore record, he made uh, that anti-Bush song, Mosh, which opposed the war, which, you know, being a rapper in 2004 and opposing George W. Bush is not exactly a radical stance. <laughs> Even his fellow white rapper, Macklemore, was doing that shit at the same time. So with that in mind, here's why this is significant to Eminem's career now. One of the biggest criticisms of Eminem's recent output is that his lyrical content, his subject matter, has just gotten so stale, so worn out. It's just him rapping about raping random celebrities, making jokes about how much he hates women, which we never knew that, or just picking some topic in the media, some controversial hot button topic, and making an off-color joke about it whether it was the, the Ray Rice shit with the Shetty Cypher or whatever. And it really has gotten old because as a just a great technical rapper, you can only hold someone's attention for too long with just the same type of shit. And it's gotten old for me too. And nowhere was that more apparent than when he appeared on the latest Big Sean record and he was on the song No Favors. So he delivered a, a very technical, very impressive verse, but it's just kind of this, the same old tasteless shit. And it, it, even as a, as a longtime Eminem fan, it's getting a bit old for me. So from a critical standpoint, this verse is, at the very least, Eminem saying something interesting again, bringing some content, which regardless of where you fall politically, I think that's something that a lot of his fans have wanted. Well, you got it. And I think that this verse is gonna increase people's curiosity when it comes to this new record that Eminem supposedly has coming out pretty soon. Because you never know, maybe this is an indicator that this new record is gonna take a bit of a different tone, which personally, that's the only thing that's gonna get me genuinely interested in this new Eminem record. I, I don't need any more rape jokes. <laughs> I, I really don't. I, I'm all tapped out on, on the rape jokes. So that's cool, just the fact that Eminem is using his wicked rhyming talent to actually say something substantial and use his platform. I think that's something that was missing, that was sorely absent from this whole discussion surrounding this freestyle. It's just the, the context of Eminem's kind of kind of waning sense of purpose. You know, he made Marshall Mathers LP2 and he, you know, did a good job of tying in his current self to his past and bringing everything full circle. And it, and for the last few years, it's been like, now what? So this is a big deal just in a in a critical perspective in this this man's almost 20 year career now. As far as what he actually says though, nothing surprised me 
There's nothing new here. What he says is pretty much how everybody who hates Trump feels. But then again, using this huge platform to kind of sum it all up into one four and a half minute bit is a very constructive action for the people who support what he's saying. This is Eminem. Anything he says is gonna have such a huge reach. So for him to sum up how probably millions of people in America feel and put it into this condensed, highly publicized thing, that's no insignificant thing. But yeah, nothing here that was said was new for anybody, I think. But to me, there is one section in this freestyle that really stands out to me as fucking ballsy and fascinating to hear, which is at the end when he draws a line in the sand and basically says fuck you to his fans who support Trump. I don't care what you say, that is ballsy. You're not gonna hear that from anyone of Eminem's stature, which is actually ironic because for someone as rich and successful as Eminem, he literally has fuck you money. He actually has the means, he can afford to just lose a couple million bucks to fans who no longer support him. So it's kind of a bit of a paradox to think like nobody at that level with that much to lose would ever you know, divide their own fan base like that. But then again, people at that level with that much to lose have enough money to do that. They don't care, especially someone like Eminem who is deep into his career. And here's another paradox for you. You would never see Taylor Swift or Ariana Grande risk dividing their massive fan bases like that. But here's the thing. How many Taylor Swift or Ariana Grande fans are fucking Trump supporters? Less than 1%. Eminem's fan base, Trump's fan base, you know there is huge, or excuse me, huge overlap there. I know, I see it every day with personal friends, coworkers, acquaintances. So it's so ironic that someone like Eminem did this. It really shows, I know people think, like people are accusing him of the opposite. People are accusing him of, of pandering and trying to just like win the support of him. No, it's the opposite. He does not give a fuck. He just doesn't give a fuck, like one of his very first singles said. Now the next question is, is it distasteful to openly dismiss and disrespect your own fans like that. In my opinion, not at all. <laughs> I just I just think it makes shit more interesting. I guess it's hard for me to speculate, but if I were a Trump supporter, I really wouldn't care. It would not affect my Eminem fandom. Like fucking B.O.B. thinks the earth is flat and I have a copy of Strange Clouds sitting around here. Fucking Jay-Z endorsed Hillary Clinton, who believe me, I was not a fan of either. I still listen to the blueprint. These people are entertainers. Your views do not have to perfectly line up with theirs in order to enjoy their music. And in fact, if anything, if this were to happen to me and I were a Trump supporter listening to this freestyle, I'm someone who prefers for my views to be constantly challenged. That's way more stimulating. I get so bored listening to people who agree with me. You know, it's nice to have some sort of validation and some sort of solidarity, but at a certain point, you gotta fucking seek out challenges to your own views. You're never gonna grow and you're just gonna stay in one stagnant place for your whole life. That's part of the problem with the political atmosphere right now. You got fucking right-wingers sitting on Breitbart agreeing with each other. You got left-wingers sitting on Buzzfeed and watching CNN agreeing with each other and there's no dialogue. So for a Trump supporter to have to sit here and listen to someone he has admired for years telling him that he's an idiot I mean, you know, one way to do it is say fuck you and never support his music. Another way is to, is to sit and think. Maybe you're still a Trump supporter, but maybe one or two things that Eminem said made sense. I just, if I were a Trump supporter, it wouldn't bother me. It just wouldn't. I would take it as one dude's artistic expression and not anything personal. But obviously there are conservative Eminem fans who are taking it to heart, and that's fine too. I just think that most importantly, as a music fan, just regardless of your partisanship, this is just a really cool moment in hip hop. You know, the biggest rapper in the world bashing half his fan base and saying fuck you to the president on national television is just cool. I just, I'm glad to have been around for it. It's kind of like a Wu-Tang is for the children type moment. I wish we could just sit back and, and appreciate that too, instead of getting caught up in all this bullshit. One more thing though. I do think that the right wingers are spot on about one thing here. And that is the media's incredibly hypocritical coverage of this freestyle. A lot of these left wingers who are just sitting back and applauding Eminem right now are the same people who have publicly crusaded against Eminem for fucking years, calling him a homophobe, a misogynist, saying that he has this destructive 
influence on youth, and it just happens to be convenient for them to side with Eminem now at this very moment. I just think that's a load of shit. It's like these liberals have selective memories because Eminem's words and viewpoints just happen to line up with their agenda at this very moment. And I think that's whack. I think that's so disingenuous. And that's one very valid point that conservatives have made about this freestyle. But of course, overall, I would like to reiterate that I am most interested in the implications of this cipher in terms of Eminem's next album. Does this mean that we're gonna get some sort of politically charged, slightly conscious, album from Eminem this time around, I for one would be really interested to hear it. I think the dude's a lot of fun when he's rhyming all this goofy shit and everything, but the reason that the Eminem show is my favorite Eminem album is because on that record, more than any of his others, he's really saying something on a lot of those songs. That record, when I listen to it, it really makes me think. And that's something that he's done to an extent on all of his projects, but to me the Eminem show represents the pinnacle of compelling social commentary from Eminem. And so I guess that context could help you understand why this freestyle is significant to me because I'm kind of curious are we going to get something that's a little more content oriented this time around I just would like to hear that so yeah let me know in the comments what you thought of this freestyle what you thought about what I had to say about this freestyle and what are your thoughts on Eminem's next album are you excited to hear it are you curious to hear it what do you think it's going to sound like as always thanks so much for watching be sure to subscribe leave a comment or shoot me a message so we can continue to talk music and I'll see you guys soon